talking with Deepika Palakal today. She is a professional squash player, has long been ranked in the top 10, was a part of the gold and silver winning Indian women's team at the South Asian Games and Asian Team Championship. Now, Deepika boycotted the National Championship squash competition from 2012 to 2015 because of the inequality in prize money, wherein the women's champ was being awarded 40% less than the men's champ. So can you take us back to that time period, back in 2012? What was happening, and why was it that you decided to say, hey, look, I'm just not going to participate? And what were you saying to the people at that time when they said, hey, Deepika, you, you can't walk out? I think I was actually very young to even uh, realize what, how big this would become. It was just a, con it, was, it wasn't actually a conscious decision to, uh, to make it how it all, you know, blew out to be, I think. It, it was just that, you know, I just didn't like the way that we were treated. We were, I think also I've always mentioned this, it's not a about the fat paychecks that we get, but it's, at the end of the day, it's about the respect that we women uh, deserve to get. And I think when 2012 came, I think I just, when I saw, when I was going to enter my name into the list, I saw the, the entry sheet and I saw the, uh, the price difference between the men and the women and I just decided from then on that I'm not going to play until uh, become even close to the men's. I didn't, I think for me it was just about trying to get as close as the men's, not even equal because I was too young to even know the difference then. But I mean, it didn't happen for about three years and then I think the issue became uh, bigger and bigger every year and I think we, we live in like right now it's 2018 where I think everyone deserves an equal opportunity in this world. So can you tell me a little bit about how you're being treated because you talk about at that time you didn't feel like it was fair treatment between men and women. What was your sense of how you're being mistreated back in that point in time? Yeah. My points uh, were very uh, simple. It was we put in as much uh, much hard work as the boys do on the squash court. We train as much as them on the squash court. We train as much as them in the gym. We uh, do as much as fitness as they do. Uh, yes, they're men, they're stronger. That's how they're built. But at the end of the day, why aren't we paid an equal sum of money? Uh, why are the men paid a lot more than women for doing the same thing? And uh, and that's it just derived from that, from that very small fact that I think also for me, I used to always train with boys when I was a junior as well, so that I could uh, I could become faster, fitter, and much better at an early age. Because you know, when you're playing the boys at the junior age, you, there is a lot more competition. So um, I felt that you know, I've always been training with the boys, and I've always done the same things. I've always, uh, you know, on court, I've tried to beat them. I've beaten a few of them. So then, you know, why why don't we? Uh, get the same prize money as they do, the, the, the same respect as they do because we do the same thing. Now when you withdrew your name and you decided to sit out these tournaments, what did you hear from your peers as a result of that? I'm not going to uh, name, uh, say names but I know that a few of the boys weren't uh, very excited of the fact that you know I was standing up for what, what we were right and I think till date I don't think they really agree with the fact that uh, we should uh, get equal prize money as much as them. Uh, but I think uh, I think everything is changing in this world right now. I think uh, women are uh, getting as good as the men out there. I think we just need opportunities and we're getting that right now. Uh, but I think I have, you know, for me it was just about support from my family and my teammates and uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that I know that other women uh, in my categories were very very happy and I think we all deserve that extra bit of uh, recognition that we, you know, we, we get now. And what did the tournament organizers say when you said, look, I'm just not going to participate? See, we live in this country where nothing is bigger uh, than associations or federations or uh, organizers. So they, they really didn't think that it would be blown out of proportion than how it was. I think uh, three years it, it went on, I think it's uh, the third year when I didn't play, um, I think the press caught up on it and it was on all the newspapers and in every news channel. So I think after that they didn't really have a chance but to have uh, you know, an equal prize money. 
if you ask me whether they did it because they actually believe that women would should get equal pri prize money or they did it because they didn't want to be questioned by the press i wouldn't know that answer i think it'd be 90% because they didn't want to answer the press but um i think um i think it was just a huge step uh, nationally for us women um i think uh, we have so many juniors coming up it's something that they can uh, look up to and you know just uh, know that they can always speak out even if it's you know if it's the truth they need to speak out and stand up for what's right and how were you treated by the press during these 3 years i was taken back with the support i got from you know from everything and everyone um uh you know i'm i'm a very uh, i'm an athlete at end of the day and i try to stay away from all the bad press as much as possible the controversies you know a lot of people uh you know took charge of what i said and well, you know it was in presses it was in magazines it was in news channels and i think that's when uh the association organizers federation decided that you know it was time that we had to we had to do something about it and uh i was very lucky to have you know a very strong voice unfortunately i didn't have other women support me from my sport what did you see on social media at this time what were people saying whether it was on facebook or twitter or other platforms see i'm to be honest i'm not uh, i try and stay away from social media because you can get carried away from it especially because you're an athlete uh but i had my phone pinging for like at least 6 months because it was in every uh, newspaper and you know i had uh, celebrities or you know athletes so uh, even people who are verified on twitter you know come up and say that you know what you're doing is right and i had other athletes as well from different sports uh, you know supporting me so i think uh, it obviously started off with me but i'm pretty sure that it's it's because of you know a lot of pressure from everyone else that you know it's it is what it is today Now what did you see in terms of sponsorship? Did you lose sponsorship as a result of this? Did you gain sponsorship or was there any impact whatsoever with corporate sponsorship? Uh no not really. I think I uh I didn't lose sponsorships because of it. Neither did I gain sponsorships because of it. Now you mentioned at that time that other women didn't really stand side by side with you meaning that they didn't add their voice to this cause what do you see now are other women now more outspoken about this issue in terms of there should be equal pay for women definitely i think uh, you know not only nationally but internationally as i said before um i think a lot of tournaments have become equal prize money and i don't even, i don't think it's the women speaking now i think it's the men as well i think they they think that uh we deserve um equal pay and i think uh, at tournaments uh, you know i can only talk for squash at tournaments you know every match for you know women's match is so uh exciting to watch as much as the men's the men's complained before because they said that you know the women's are not as exciting to watch than the men so why should they get paid more but if you look at the draws if you look at videos i think the women's matches are are exciting as exciting as the men's and i think the circuit is growing only because you're giving equal respect to the women and that's why they want to do well now let me ask you when you came back in 2016 and competed in the tournament because there was equal prize money how did that feel when there was kind of a concrete result You know actually to be honest there was a little pressure on me because it was something that I I wanted to win because I knew if I didn't people would say that you know she's just been fighting for money and she's landed up here and she's lost in whatever round she's lost. So I think for me it was that tournament was uh, was very important uh, to win. Um and I think it opened obviously a lot of doors for women in uh, Indian women squash. and i think uh, you know for me there are a few other people who play squash in the country i think it was a huge year for us knowing that our voices are finally being heard and i think uh, that's something that uh, i'm very proud you know to have started or you know to just have been able to do it with people supporting me and now we've seen some kind of a ripple effect we're seeing that there is more parity of pay in professional squash We're seeing that the junior leagues that there's more parity of pay there. How do you feel about this? I think it's great. I mean as a junior I didn't really earn money. It was always about my parents trying to uh, pitch in whenever they can or 
you know, trying to take me for tournaments or sometimes even miss tournaments because we didn't have enough funds. So I think it's great that the, you know, the juniors know um, how to earn money. I know uh, it's hard, um, you know, when you're 12 or 13, you really don't know how to uh, manage uh, funds. But I think it's something that they can look forward to when they win a tournament to know that, you know, it's, they have to work hard to earn money. Do you have any final word about the future of the sport or for women coming up in the sport? I think it's very important uh, to set goals. But having said that, I think it's very important to stand up for what's right, uh, to be open about what you want to do in life and, uh, you know, to, to truly believe in that goal and try and follow it regardless of what uh, bumps you have on the way. And uh, I've always said this, I've, very, I've been very honest uh, with myself, I've been very honest with people around me and I think that's what's made the difference is just to try and stand up for what you think is right and you know make it right. Thank you Deepika. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.